moldboard plow is used for primary tillage and is perhaps the most aggressive tillage tool still in use today. It cuts the soil, lifts it, and turns it or inverts it upside down. Moldboard plows have been used for hundreds of years and their precursor to what we have today was invented by Thomas Jefferson in the late 1700s. John Deere invented the modern moldboard plow in the late 1830s and sold tens of thousands of them to American farmers before the turn of the century. The moldboard plow can potentially invert soil six to 12 inches deep. It buries plant residue and uproots small and large weeds and buries weed seeds. This is still often the tool used to plow down a sod or perennial forage. Unfortunately, this aggressive tillage also leaves soil prone to erosion and loss in soil quality. In addition, it can bring buried weed seeds back to the soil surface. This tool is much less popular today because of conservation tillage efforts and the need to preserve and build our agricultural soils. The chisel plow is used for primary tillage with more limited soil disturbance than the moldboard plow. The vibrating shanks and chisels do not invert the soil, but rather mix the soil layers, maintaining some surface residue. The chisel plow gained popularity after the Dust Bowl of 1930s and was marketed as the plow to save the plains. The chisel plow is effective at controlling annual weeds and less effective than the moldboard plow controlling large weeds and perennials. The tandem disc harrow generally follows a primary tillage implement in heavy residue or can be used as a primary tool in lighter residue situations. The tandem disc gangs run one behind the other at an angle to break up clods and incorporate residue and maximize soil mixing to create an acceptable seed bed. In this video, this harrow is followed by a rolling harrow to further create a fine seed bed in a single pass. The cutting action of a disc harrow depends on the blade diameter, weight, concavity, as well as the angle of the disc harrow gang and the operating speed. The concave blades cut or chop weeds and uproot small seedlings. This tool is not effective on large weeds or most perennials. It can actually help spread perennial vegetative structures under some circumstances. To finish up our presentation on the effects of tillage implements and weed control, let's briefly talk about the weed seed bank. How does tillage system influence the weed seed bank? The weed seed bank is the reserve of viable weed seeds present in the soil plow layer or at the surface in a no-till system. It includes both new weed seeds recently deposited and older seeds from previous years which still may be viable that have persisted in the soil. Keep in mind that the different tillage implements impact weed seed placement differently. As you see in this figure, which summarizes the results of a tillage study conducted in Ontario, Canada, the moldboard plow, which inverts the soil, tends to bury the lamb's quarter seed much deeper than the other tillage implements. After years of repeated plowing, you tend to end up with a relatively uniform distribution of weed seeds down to the plow layer. For many weed species, seeds that are buried more than four inches are likely too deep to successfully emerge. The chisel plow and no-till management leave many more of the seeds near the soil surface. In fact, in continuous no-till, almost all the seeds are near the soil surface, which can influence their fate, as we will see in the next image. The type of tillage used can impact seed placement in the soil, but a number of other factors influence the fate of weed seeds in the soil seed bank. This graphic shows what can happen to weed seeds once they disperse and leave the mother plant, either naturally or with our help, such as during crop harvest or due to weather or animals. They can germinate and live, flower, and potentially produce more seeds, germinate and die for various reasons, such as being buried too deep with tillage, or killed by a post-emergence herbicide. They can remain dormant in the soil and persist for several years, or they can be eaten by various animals such as birds, rodents, and insects. 
Finally, they can also decay from exposure to various soil microorganisms. Finally, it's important to remember that the seeds of some weed species can remain alive longer than others. This figure shows the results from a study conducted in Nebraska, where they buried weed seeds eight inches deep in the soil. They removed and tested the germination of the seeds almost every year for 17 years. This study showed that the seeds of some species, such as shatter cane, only survive for a few years, while others, like velvet leaf, can remain viable for many years. In general, the seeds of annual grassy weeds usually survive for less than five years, while some broadleaf dicot species with hard seed coats and or high levels of dormancy can remain viable for longer periods of time under the right conditions. Keep in mind that in this study, the seeds were placed in a cool soil environment protected from predation. So this would increase longevity and the chances for survival. It might be similar to mobor pie in a field and then leaving it unplowed for 17 years. The seeds tested in this experiment are the seeds that were buried the deepest. The good news is that in the real world, germination, pathogens, and predators would reduce the chances of seed surviving for many years. Thank you.